right now, good prevails all the time. It doesn't matter how bad you've been. If you turn it around, you're going to win. You will win no matter who you are. Hey, welcome to our documentary. My name is Fernie. I'm Owen. And uh, here we are documenting life and times during COVID-19. We wanted to focus on our town because we live here. It's Victoria, it's the biggest city on our island. Life has changed quite a bit for yeah. everyone. Yeah, as you can see, we're standing in front of a closed skate park. Lots of things are closed, not just the skate parks, buildings, businesses. They've closed my favorite hiking trail. There wasn't even too many people there, but. The main focus of this particular documentary, we are gonna be investigating the lives and times of the homeless in Victoria, BC, to see how life has changed for them. Um, if it's better, they're getting more help, or if they're just being completely ignored. Yeah, they've been the most noticeable change in Victoria because they've congregated in groups of hundreds. I, there's one camp I asked and they said there was 400 people there. There's another one where it looks like there's over a thousand people. Then there's many other little small ones that pop up here and there because it, they have just different ways of setting up their camps and they look like culturally they don't want to be in the very large downtown one or they don't want to be at the uh, the one that's very fenced in. It looks almost kind of like a, an outdoor jail. So follow us as we go investigate these camps and see how life is treating them. We just went to so many stores, so many stores and they're all sold out. But guess what? We've just found masks. We got lucky and we found some, so we're yeah. doing this safe. I feel like this all looks like shit though. Like even if I was to throw this into a video. Good. This is how we show where we are. Okay. You and our banter about how this all of that video looks like shit. Yes. <laughs> you told me about some spray paint. Yeah. Uh, what did it say on it? Something about all the homeless are congregating in Beacon Hill. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we'll go there then. Yeah, let's find the spray paint so we can get the message. On our drive through Victoria, we found the spray paint scrawled on the walls. A striking message, cut out, cut back, cut off, still strong. Beacon Hill, Tent City. We're gonna go find out uh, some more info on Tent City. Which one? There's more than there, there's Well, they said Beacon Hill, Tent City. I haven't seen Beacon Hill, Tent City, but I've seen downtown uh, Tent City, which is huge. And then there's the other one closer to uh, the finishing store, right across the road from there. And uh, it's super organized. They have clean bathrooms, running water. It looks more like an event where people are gonna go camping and watch like a music fest, but it's just people living. I wanna figure out who wrote that message, why they're writing it, what their motive is. I might do some question asking to see who's doing the spray paint. Detective where? Detective where? Detective where? We're on our way to Beacon Hill Tent City. Here we come. Question asking. <laughs> uh, yes, this is day one of the documentary. We're going to be searching for the homeless camps in Beacon Hill. So, day one updates. Stay tuned. Starting to rain. Starting to rain. Um, we we're do this before it gets bad. We're walking through Beacon right now, seeing if we can find them. Well, I saw there was tents over here and there, and I think actually there is might still be one here. Can you go take a quick peek and then like we'll like ask if anybody's home. Anybody home? Oh, we're we're doing a documentary. Uh, we just wanted to ask your guys' opinions because nobody's been uh, focusing on, um, well, the homeless population. And we're just uh, some YouTubers who are local and we wanted to like- Maybe we can go in. Give you guys a voice. There's a guy uh, actually just over that way after these bushes. There's another set of bushes. Uh, his name's Shay, he's actually doing uh, blogs. Oh, nice. yes, you cool, might Shay. Want, you might want to talk with him actually. Sweet, okay. And then Cause yeah, this is your home and we're gonna respect that. Yeah, and... it's uh, kind of messy, but. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Trying to throw away the garbage. We don't gotcha. mind. You should see my room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, my place is a bit of a mess. I'm right Dennis. Now. But where's your other friend over that? Yeah, I'll, I'll walk you over that way. Oh, that'd be super cool. helpful. Thank you. Because yeah, we're kind of lost looking around. Yeah. Yeah, we we're looking for someone who might want to like represent like your situation. Yeah, that's what kind of doing on the vlog. Is Shane home or what? Help. You want to be home? Tony. 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 
Hey, How's puppy. it going? Aww. <laughs> yeah. You're a good boy. Shay's out doing, uh, at our place, he's doing a uh, podcast right now or something. Okay. He actually just sent a blog out to the uh, chief of police or something like that about uh, being called Chop Chops and we're more than welcome to give him all the numbers of the bikes we have and if there's any stolen bikes, they're more than welcome to have them back. We don't steal them, we find them, we build them. And, yeah, you'd be and surprised the bikes you find in the garbage here though. Yeah, so I mean, I find gold in the shit in the bin outside. neighbor or neighbor ex have any smokes, do you know? Yeah, I got smoke. So. Did you guys hear me holler for supper? No. Supper. <laughs> What'd you cook? It's uh, pulled pork with rice and cream corn. Did you guys want some? <laughs> I'm okay. We already ate. ate. We already <laughs> ate. <laughs> Thanks for the offer. Thank you so much, though. <laughs> yeah, no worries. We continued our journey following Frank while he pushed a baby stroller filled with takeout boxes to the local camps. So who do, who donates these meals? Something that Shay got by, yeah, got back for us. Like they came down here for about a week and they were giving us meals and then they took it away from us. So it's, it has become a little bit more comfortable, like a little easier to start like taking care of yourselves? I wouldn't go that far because now, now we can't get into like a hotels and stuff. Where oh, our friends are right. Gotcha. We, we used to be able to use showers at our friends' places and shit. Oh, I understand. But yeah. now that the COVID crap is happening, we can't really shower anywhere, right? But you say you got more meals now. Yeah, well, like they never brought us meals, really, right? Yeah. They, and then uh, the COVID started, and they decided that they're gonna help out the few camps that are around, and they brought up maybe 15 meals, and there's probably about 30, 40 of us out here. Half the people don't want to eat anyway, so we don't really go, you know, around to everybody and give out the meals. We inform them that we're getting meals at certain times and if they come down to get them then they can have them best we're, system you can have pretty much yeah save me running around trying to find people yeah. so you're kind of the guy that they give it to uh, no she she is kind of the guy and uh, every once in a while he sleeps in and i'm awake so i'll go get the meals for them nice nice That's really i mean i got you. like eight yeah. people staying in my camp right here so i mean it makes sense that somebody goes and gets it <laughs> make sure we eat right that's awesome man taking care of the community yeah it's no. not something i want to do but <laughs> You know, every once in a while, somebody's got to do something. To Step help. up, you know, right? I mean, help it's out. Like, uh, people, they call it farming, where they steal all your shit. <laughs> I'm from Winnipeg. We, farmers help people, man. They don't fucking steal. Come back to Manitoba and stuff. Call yourself a farmer and steal. See what happens. But this is kind of cool, though, eh? Yeah, there's an eagle sitting at the top of it right now. Uh, he's, he's, he's just too, chilling eh? up there. What a good spot to sit and take a good look around. It's like his throne. <laughs> I would prefer to be camped out here over Topaz. Yeah, it's so crowded. Yeah, Topaz is just too much uh, regulations and crap there. Yeah, we we passed by. There was a lot of government officials like trying to control everyone. Well, I mean, they, they look like a concentration camp to me. Oh, you know, you're in row four, uh, tent five. But no. downtown yeah. in the middle of the street there felt more like a concentration camp. Topaz felt more like a music festival with no music. Oh yeah, you mean with the cage around the uh, people now? Yeah, but I mean, like if you if you were breaking in apartment blocks and scaring homeowners and shit. I mean, they gotta do something for the homeowners, right? I heard the break-ins were starting to get bad, and then it started to get a bit more... Um, well, I saw the cages showed up after that. No, the what, what it was, was there was a lady that had a two-year-old son okay. in her arms, right? And she was on the news saying that uh, her place was broken in eight times. Oh, and the last goodness. time, in a week actually, and the last time a guy had an axe in his hand. Oh my god. Right, and so she's scared for her life and uh, her son's life. And then she walks away from the camera, and, uh, holding her son's hand, walking down the street. Huh. She didn't look too scared to me, but I mean, you know, that's not a life for a kid, right? So, I mean, you got to do something about the reckless attitude of the people down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think putting them in a cage really suits it, but, you know, what, I'm not the government, so. Put them somewhere and let the homeowners that uh, building that they broke into kick the shit out of them or something. <laughs> They'll think twice about fucking doing it again, right? And that brought us to our first street life enthusiast, the Bamboo Bonehead of Beacon Hill Park. I'm the Bamboo Bonehead. Hey, nice. Oh, I want the cookies. I want the cookies. All I was gonna say, <laughs> he's the cookie monster. There's your cookies, your dinner, oh, nice. and your well, he's some kind of monster. <laughs> Started out as a bike builder, a bamboo bike builder, about five years ago, and I was building bikes and buying my stuff off the homeless um, bike parts. I used bikes to assemble my frames. So I've been fighting for charter rights for the homeless. I've been fighting for this and that, and all of a sudden, pandemic breaks out, and we've got pretty much. This is a privilege to me. Um, so yeah. I hope that all the homeless that are watching this or see this say you know we really got to make a, uh, an opportunity here work 
because it's our last chance to verify that we can do something with our life. Some of the most talented, smartest people I know are on the streets. I believe that. And they're no different than anybody else. They just choose a different lifestyle. Right. They probably have a lot um, more survival skills they than do. a lot of they other do. people. See, I came here on a... Okay, I built these things. I call them survival units. Let's get a and, little look at this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Move in this summer, eh? I built this in a month on site with a hacksaw blade and a screwdriver, no power tools. Huh. All bamboo and waste materials. It's 100% uh, watertight. It's about 90 pounds empty. It goes right in here. It rests on there on a pivot. It sits on that nut. Mm -hmm. And then I just tie it on and safety cables. And it just sits on the pivot on the seat and it rides right on that. And you tie it on and it just rolls with it. Could we see the inside? You can. I usually just heat it up with the flame. I don't use that flame for uh, actually heating myself while I'm sleeping. I used to use a lantern, a propane lantern that the materials came off. Reminds me of a gypsy caravan. I can walk in it like this and stand up in it. You can stand up in there, eh? It. Nice. And uh, it's got a sturdy floor, but the back here, where the bedding is, it's got a flexible floor. It's mounted in bamboo and cage, so it's actually springy. So it's a built-in bed. Yeah, basically that's a uh, yeah, it's a flexible floor. It actually absorbs shit. When you pull up to a, sp a spot, if it was not a pandemic and you were moving every day, yeah, it takes four minutes to move your camp. And it's sitting on two milk crates. The bike hooks up in a minute, and you're out of there. Self-contained. Uh, the propane cylinder is the heaviest thing on the on it. This is half the weight of the whole vehicle. Wow. So you put all your cargo at the back, and it's a four to eight minute move, and you're done. It's cool. I hope I see more people now, living in a structure yeah, like this. Around. I'm working with Piers Mustard Seed. I got a website started. This stuff's toxic, but this I call poor man's fiberglass because it sticks like a sticker. All it is is a deckling material, which I, I'm just in the process of re-sticking this stuff because it's delaminating in a few spots. You can see some of the cage frame. See that metal stuff? Yeah, it's chicken wire. That stuff that goes around the trees wraps around the bamboo frame. After I screw it together, I just tape off the joints and then put this stuff on with wire and start laying it on inside and out with a vapor barrier of insulation, bubble wrap, styrofoam wrap, anything that I can recycle that's light and doesn't absorb water. Uh, and this stuff is by the dump truck load, thrown away deckling from wow. sign shops. That's so cool, you're using reusable materials yes. and building these homes. And what happens too, when you put it in a ripped, uh, like a paper mache crisscrossing in it. When the sun hits it, it tightens up and it shrinks all different directions. So the frame tightens up as it, as it shrinks onto it and it gets more durable as it goes, but there are warping issues. You manicured the whole soil around your space too. Yeah, but uh, yeah, these things are, are very waterproof, very repairable. So you're living comfortably in the pandemic, I guess. Unbelievably comfortable, that's the thing. That's now, awesome. Is it, has it gotten better for you, would you say? Well, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but why? It's sad that half the world had to get sick before the homeless got their rights back. Wow. Because there was many charter issues that I saw. The discrimination was sickening. Before the before. Before. And now we it seems to have turned where we've got more empathy. Too much. There's empathy now and but you're getting more resources potentially, food. Yes, for sure. It's it's well, better. Well, so now. is the rest of um, the world though. They're all being given uh, yes. money as well, so I wouldn't say that it's uh, too much like sadness empathy. What, I think no, that what it is is the, the place to call resources. your own that you can stay permanently. That's the biggest problem I had is worrying about leaving my shit somewhere and by law taking it. Yeah, they were a bigger threat than the street people ever were. And now you're kind of left to you your. Know, I, I got to watch, but I got three different cable locks on here. It goes. It has a deadbolt that goes through nice. here. There's a deadbolt that goes through there, that's this. Right on. Then a cable lock that comes around the wheel and axle and through here, you, that wheel's hammered onto there. You have to hacksaw the axle off to get it off. So overall you feel safer. Another one, three. Yeah, oh, totally, totally. Much safer. Yeah, on the streets, if you're getting hassled, chances are you're doing bad stuff to people, like stealing their shit, selling fake drugs to them, that people that are drug addicts. Um, stealing their stuff when they're not looking like uh, pretending you're their buddy looking at hey can I check out your camper and yeah. they're not looking and they grab something and you know it was just there that's the kind of people that have problems uh, there are vigilante people that have threatened to light ladies tents on fire with gasoline and stuff because wow. they're women they'll pick on those people yeah. but they don't pick on me because 
I may be appear to be nice, but when I go off the deep end, I have a criminal record for assault. I'm not a nice guy, <laughs> and I won't take yeah. it. I'm not tough, but I'm psychotic that way mm -hmm. because I just I was abused as a boy, and when I get back to New Corner, I go crazy. And all I've seen on the streets is abuse until now. Um, now we've actually got it made, and nice. if they don't realize that, there's a lot of them that aren't appreciating this. It's the only opportunity I see for anybody to make That's anything of themselves. I wandered off myself a, a year into homelessness. And I had an angelic experience on a bridge, on the Selkirk Bridge, where four people walked up to me and asked me if I would surrender my soul to Jesus Christ. I was about to off myself. I kid wow. you not, I was sitting there smoking a bowl of meth, drinking, and just going to push myself backwards. Somehow these four dudes knew what I was up to. I didn't realize that at the time. They disappeared on the Selkirk Bridge after they prayed for me, and they were out of sight. And you can see 100 feet each direction. So I felt pretty... That sounds like a miracle. Well, it of sounds life. like an angelic experience, but it sounds a little far fetched. But that's what happened. I, like I got tingles. Just Shay <laughs> and me are very Christian based. We call this defenders of the faith because we believe yeah, in Christ. That. We Same believe science. in repenting. We believe in unconditional acceptance, <clears throat> no matter who you are. It's been hard for me because a lot of guys, oh, don't talk to that person. He's mental. He'll steal from you. I have an issue right now with a mentally ill person who keeps stealing from me, but I'm going to teach him a lesson in a civil way where I'm going to catch him in the act and say, I've given everything to you. Why do you do this? Please, I forgive you. If you treat people like machines and kids, they're going to act like kids. And that's what I've noticed some of these outreach places do, our place. People run wild, make bad, bad decisions, make arguments, fight. You can't do that. It's unacceptable. So we plan on, if people come out here, they got to behave themselves, or we're, not only are the tenters here that are respected by the community, if we don't win the community over here, we're fools. Like, my goal is to make sure the community... You're kind of a, you're a community leader of sorts, it seems. Yeah, because I'm uh, on both sides. Inspiration, uh, even, maybe? And, yeah, we have to lead by example. Example, um, yeah. A role model. You have to. Because the biggest thing that's on some of their mind is their next fix. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whether they can steal your camera, con you, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they're looking for their next score. Uh, and they're mentally ill, they're on drugs, they may not understand, they're stressed out. Yeah, fine. And they leave a big pile of garbage. The way Extinction Rebellion works is we're very outspoken. It's great. If you don't go green, the planet's going to get mean. That's what they yeah. stand for. Because we're not really wanting a tent city out here, but we do no. want a uh, camp where it's spread out. Have you noticed any other like changes since the pandemic has hit for you personally or the people I around? feel like I'm free free to do as I please as long as I take accountability for my actions and don't offend people. Like you can't go around destroying the community. We decided to ask the bamboo bonehead about Shay and this is what he had to tell us. He is he stands for what's right. Mm -hmm. If you do something wrong here and you're going to affect the community or the campers, he's a big boy. He's a hothead. He, he, he's aggressive. <laughs> Sounds like we need to talk he, to him. He, Every he's the biggest boy one. on the block, <laughs> and he does the job well. We call him the mayor up there, but he's actually the spokesperson. It's more appropriate. <laughs> awesome. And you need a guy like that. You do. He, Every he's a leader. He one. believes in the right thing, but he also doesn't stand for being walked on. Hmm. And no. we, need, we need that cool. for enforcement here. Hopefully we can continue this with Shay. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure you will. Well, thanks oh, for God, your time. God bless you guys. And they call me the Bamboo Bonehead. I gave myself that the Bamboo name. Bonehead. There really is not much of a difference between the man who's living in a big house pulling in six figures every year and the people who are living out here on the street. And we're really all the same at the core, and that's human <laughs> spirit. That. <laughs> Sorry, someone just yelled. But that's human spirit that actually connects us all together. And you know, we all should be treated equally. There shouldn't be a separation and us first them. We need to see each other as brothers and sisters and come together and help each other get the help and the resources we need. And I think that's really important, especially in a time like this when you know people are suffering and whatnot. It's really cool to hear the stories of different people, some more some positive and some negative but we want to film it all. We want to get the realness of it. So it's been a pretty insightful day. I feel like my eyes have been somewhat open to the situation and I feel connected to these people. I don't feel any different, you know. I can see myself in their eyes in a different lifetime. So I have empathy, peace and love. Hard to say what it's like in every city. In our city, uh, we get treated pretty good, but at the same time, we get treated as like a, a second class citizen don't have the same rights as a normal citizen has just by the way they can just barge in and they do. 
We were searching for three days for the infamous figure known as Shay, the big dog on campus, who is a positive role model for the street life scene in Victoria, BC. We've heard rumor that he's running his own podcast from the streets. As a voice to be heard, these are his words. My name is Shay Smith. I am a resident ex at uh, said camp, uh, Beacon Hill. Canadian citizen, advocate for uh, charter rights and freedoms, and basically a uh, human being. I find myself right now just to be, uh, I don't like to say homeless, because every Canadian citizen has a home in Canada. We're all Canadians, right? So I, I think I'm home, right? So homeless is not really a thing I like to identify with, but uh, just find myself in the COVID crisis right now, just kind of being outdoors in Canada, my home. <laughs> What's the name of the podcast? Tough one when it's getting out there because it's a, the homeless idea. It was what it was originally started as, as a homeless idea, a, a, a idea that didn't have any boundaries or, or, or limits. Then it was going to be to the homeless solution because I figured it's us talking about us, right? So, what our solution would be to house, I guess, our our community, right? So. The heart behind that is great. I mean, I understand that people would think that people could just throw people in hotels and that's, you know, what you would do for your, like, cousin or your aunt who is visiting or something like that, and that would be fine, you know. And you can't just throw homeless people in a hotel room. Uh, that's just, that's why they don't run a lot of times to people who don't have MasterCards and stuff like that, right, is because, you know, they trash stuff. And they're not... It's not because necessarily they're there to, to destroy anything or they're there to cause any damage. It's because they don't have like the same social interaction, I guess, or social like uh, their hello might not be a hello to you in the same way. Do you know what I mean? Like they're, they're just different social interactions. They have a different way of acting, being. When you've been like pushed down by society so far back that you can't come back and that you've just basically like, this is your basic way of communicating. And that's other people's way of communicating. That's not gonna be received so well by a hotel, right? So it's a great idea to just throw people into a hotel room, but uh, it's, it's not a good idea as far as like the peer support that's, or the staffing that's concerned. I don't think the people that are the, the hotels or the staff should ever be blamed for like this mess that's going on. I think it's just a matter of having the peer supports in place and stuff like that. Noticed any changes since COVID has come around for the way that the homeless might have been treated? Yeah, I gotta say I have. You know what? I mean, I'd be a liar if I said that I didn't see that there is some heart out there, and that there's a lot of people are trying, and a lot, a lot, a lot of people are are, are just uh, doing what they can to just to bring our our uh, like you guys coming down here and doing this. And, you know, it's great. It was it's amazing, honestly. Uh, you know, this COVID thing is is I hate to say it, but it's kind of helped. A bit bringing humanity closer. I mean, it really has, and uh, this maybe on the curve is a good aware. thing. So everyone's physically distant, but socially, I find that everyone's even more aware and starved for socialization now than ever. See, that's the thing is that we don't feel it so much <laughs> on, our, on our side of the fence. We don't feel it so much. We're just the same as everywhere because like, we're kind of outcast anyway. So we, you know, like I mean, we don't really have the physical distancing thing going on, which we try to practice as much as we can, but. What are we gonna do, man? <laughs> like, I mean, if, if you're gonna catch something down here, it's like, if you're gonna die, we're pretty close to it anyway. So <laughs> there's a Zen point here where you just kind of let go of your material belongings and your material wealth and that whole thing in your head about financial gain and whatever that is. And that part of, spiritual. yeah, it becomes spiritual and who you are. It becomes a lot more of where this is at. And you just have to just let all of that stuff go because you realize you can't hold on to it down here on this level. So life kind of is on the same sense. And so I'm not really afraid to die. Of course, I'm, I, I have strong beliefs, what I believe in. So uh, I'm not really afraid to just, to just let go. It's just, you know, I'll give you guys a handshake right now. But that's not the way we want to kill COVID. I mean, in a sense, to, too, for human, <laughs> human race to continue, obviously, let's keep our fitness with it and do our thing for, to, to you know, support that. So... But amongst our community, we haven't really noticed much of a change, so. <laughs> Would we possibly be able to visit in and film part of you casting next time? For sure, absolutely. You guys are welcome to come down to the Pandora tonight, next time, tomorrow. Are you casting today? Yeah, we're thinking about doing that. Actually, yeah, the, 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 yeah, I know Colin was, is, is probably hyped to do that today. I, yeah, I think we should definitely do that. Yes, sir. Let us sit in. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, you bet. You bet.
Yes, sir. You guys want to see something cool with Tony? Yeah. I'll show you he can climb a tree, no problem. What? Oh, yeah. All right. This is a tough life, bro, but... You gonna get it? Oh! Yeah, you can do it. Go <laughs> on, get down. Yes. I think he earned it. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, puppy. <laughs> yeah, checking out this cool custom skateboard from the 250. Fucking right, this is Scurvy Dogs. This is Victoria BC. And you painted uh, it yourself. I painted this myself. This is uh, handmade. Well, not the board, of course. But you yeah, know what? Cool. Really appreciate what you guys are doing, getting this out there. And so you know what? I'm gonna give this to you, man. You just started skating again. What? Oh no, no, no! no, I, no. I, yeah, I, just, I just got a really good one. There you go. Are you, are you sure? Hard, oh, that's can sick. I, can I paint Scare the one up. I got and give it back in return? I only need one. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. I paint. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. There you go, bro. I just gift for that gift. One. Yeah, I'm just gonna come back. That one. It's just it's because you guys are so fucking cool and oh, honestly man. doing what you're doing and getting our voice out there. Then. <laughs> Radical, man. Thank you, thank you. you bet, really? Sweet. Uh, we're at the McDonald's parking lot right now, waiting for Shay and his friend to come back. Uh, this guy's like the Johnny Carson of the homeless camps. That's what they say. So we're just waiting to get a sick interview. It's getting exciting. There you go, podcast four. Here we go. And with the help of We've got um, a couple guys here today. Fernie and yep. Owen, you guys can put your name on this. Yep. Come on, we'll go ahead and put your name on this. Absolutely. Because you know what? Why not? 9-11 Pandora. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the shit that's happening on Pandora. We're obviously been caged in in the last week. Um, you're caged in up at Beacon Chain? No, we're not, bro. Mm. Okay. So they've got the uh, the two areas uh, in Victoria and one in Vancouver. Optimer Park in Vancouver and Topaz and Pandora. They're closing down to the COVID pandemic. Well, this is the first thing I'd like to know is, is okay, when you want people to socially distance, why would you put them in a fence closed in together? I think that this is, one of the things is, is breaking the law right here. you kind of being forced to break the law and they're like turning their heads to it. Because what, we're the useless homeless or something like that or we're the people that don't matter. I guess we're already beginning to face of like don't matter. No, we have no communication, so therefore we have no way of communicating what does matter. Yeah. Now that the municipality has got the federal government paying for it, you know, the, the smartest thing to do is what we talked about yesterday, Shay, and that's the, you know, the, the hotels versus modular homes. Well, All temporary modular homes are the way to go because it, basically the, the hotels right now are the temporary modular homes. They're already zoned land. You've already forced them to be zoned land in the meantime because obviously these are the, where, where the homeless are being housed. So in that being said, those hotels have unfortunately become the zoned land for the temporary modular homes or what would be. And, and homeless people are getting kicked out at a rapid rate there for non, non-compliance of hotel. Which because they're under the Innkeepers Act. They're, they're not I mean, under the, the Renters and Landlord Tenants Act. They're give under me, give the me a break. Innkeepers Act. You know what? Yes, man. And they have 24 hours they can evict right away. So what's happening is a lot of the homeless are getting displaced uh, uh, from where their tent was into a hotel uh, and then displaced once again to where their tents not now not. That's so we've right. got to, you know, it's um, that training okay. once again. The government tried to I'm throw go in there. and come in and 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 ram it down people's throat because they only had a window of opportunity that the federal government would pay for this. So they rammed it down and they thought Provincial the solution government. was get us in hotels. After hearing about the hotels offering shelter for the homeless, we decided to go investigate. Uh, which way is the main office? Go in those front, or go to the front door there and ring the buzzer. They should let you in. The, okay. Tell you which way to go. Thank you. All right, action yeah, man. Safe, Safe injection. We're going in. Okay, now I should probably put the camera down. Okay. The only thing I can describe to you is the interior of the lobby, as we were not allowed to film inside. The ceiling had been ripped down in places, revealing open panels of wires dangling. The floors were kept clean and a security guard posted in the entrance. People shuffled back and forth to the safe injection site or to their rooms. We walked in and they said that they, we couldn't film because of confidentiality agreements, but they gave us the manager's cards. So we're going to gonna ask... Properties cannot be filming on here, right? Okay. This is private property, so... Okay. Yeah, you can talk to Jordan if you would like to do that. Okay.
350 rooms came available uh, since their um, announcement of how they're going to handle the most vulnerable citizens of British Columbia. It's it's been how long, and we've how many people here have been approached with a hotel? Not at all. No. Okay. None. Hotels. In Beacon, our, right our, our view is that we're yep. going to we're boycotting the hotels just because of yep. the, the, the treatment of the homeless. Yep. We're not, we don't want a hotel. Absolutely. Okay, temporary modular housing from our standpoint is the way to go. You have a filtering process where you have a referral through the hotels, which you got like, you know, it takes 30 days to build 30 temporary modular homes, okay? So say you build three units of that. So you have 90 homes built in 30 days. And that's days. quite slow. Well, the mayor got $390 million about two years ago for modular homes, and where is it? See, here, oh, here we no, go, no, no. at uh, six rolling. So, yeah, they don't like us very much, six. Well, you know what, they don't yeah. like a lot of people. You know, the police need to have more, pe more people trained in mental disability. I think, I think that's a big issue, right? Because no. they don't know how to deal with it. Well, I think they're being kind of more clamped it's, down it's, on us. Yeah, so. that's been quite easy and quite it down here for for business, I guess, you know, as, cool. as business on Pandora goes. Good for you. Guys, is that, Ross, is that camping stuff being thrown out? Or donated? Is that a donation? Oh, hey, thank you. Go grab a tent, guys. Cool. Thank you. I need a tent, guys. If there's two tents there, man, I need a tent. See how quickly this stuff goes through. But usually if it falls into the right hands, it'll get into the, the hands of the needy, right? Nice. In closing, um, you know, let's let's get a let's get a new formation, uh, like a, a new formula for the government. That's my that's my vote. Is uh, the, the system's not working? Um, it's making a, a mockery of, of a lot of you know what business operates at a deficit so many years in a row. Let's work together. Let's try and bring this in to where we have like more peer support for everybody that's being transitioned from homelessness into like you know mainstream society. As immediately, and like, that's, let's a big, just that's a try big transition. And, let's just try and help each other out and help yeah. everybody get through this so everybody can stay healthy. We can kill this fucking virus, right? Yeah. yeah. The end of the day, it's you know what, thanks to those hotel owners that are giving up the places and at least yeah. making the effort for it. Yeah, no, definitely it's, for sure. And, and 100% thank you to the people in Topaz and uh, the neighborhood yeah, of Topaz. The people that are helping, the people that are you getting guys out are awesome. there. Thank you, know, you for we, trying. We, we are, and we are very thankful. We've got a thank, thank you board going up over there on the fence. Hey, when, when, when life gives you lemons, we made lemonade. So we're, we're taking our, our fence and we're using it for advertising. And At the local level, the um, government, the mayor, and stuff like that, they need to start start using some of the funds that have been, been socked away for us, right? Yeah. Like, start addressing our issues, the right? And it's, it's not that hard to figure out, right? All they got to do is be prepared to spend some of that money they've already been given. Yeah. Let's rock right? and roll. Let's yeah. do it. All right, guys. All right. Podcast 4. Thanks very much for listening. Modular home. Thanks for watching. Cheers. In a time with riots, quarantine, disease, economic crash, violence, political mayhem, and a general fear sweeping society, there is an untold story, one only half covered by the media, the homeless society. Follow us on our adventure as we interview societies unheard. Hey, good people of the World Wide Web. Uh, this is Fernie and Owen making an update. Oh, and Shay. And Shay's just walking up right now. Hey, Shay. We were just about to say our plan of the day on camera, and you walked up right at oh. the right moment. What's the plan, boys? So the, the plan, plan of the day was to uh, <laughs> was to essentially go and actually see some locations and travel as a group together and meet some more people. Uh, I, I know that we're supposed to meet the grandfather, which I keep hearing about from cool. a few different sources now. Awesome. So we'd like to try to track him down. Yeah, and we're also just kind of doing a day in the life thing, hanging out with Shay, seeing uh, what it's all about, getting some action. Yeah. Right on. Sounds, great. Sounds pretty cool.
big impact. Yeah, we're big groups at a time, you know. But uh, what if you think that we keep all the social services busy? Ambulance, law enforcement, military, hospitals, you name it, we keep it busy. We're the main pillars in society, I think. We have the biggest families here on the island and around the world, it's a lot like that. You know what I mean? The biggest families and the biggest legal businesses. Why do we always have to see the dark of it, right? It's just maybe the little problem in BC, mostly in BC too, is that we don't hold our own, right? How come the, in one square in, in Montreal, okay? One square, one ghetto, it's called Oshlaga. There's twice as much user in all BC. You'll never see a syringe on the ground. You'll never see them willing and dealing. They're doing right in your face. Why? Because we hold our own, right? I think that's what's missing. COVID camping eviction update, Tuesday, May 5th. Public safety order was issued April 25th. The order says there can be no camping on Pandora or at Topaz after noon on May 9th, this Saturday. Most recent updates, BC Housing does not have enough shelters lined up for everyone at Topaz and Pandora, but have confirmed 195 spaces. We don't expect a cops bylaw. Force eviction this Saturday, May the 9th. Save on Foods Arena, the death camp. Death camp, eh? Right. What do you think they're gonna do there? Oh, uh, I don't know, man. They got 50 beds. Only 50? Uh, yeah, partitions. A lot more than 50 people here. Oh, yeah. What do you think they're gonna do with the rest of the people? Just, they don't know. They don't know? And we don't know. Yeah, it's like you can't just promise all these places and then have no one and to go and kick beds. them out. Yeah. Where's everyone gonna go? They hey. tell them they're evicted yeah. from this spot and then where are they sending you? They haven't given a destination. That's right. Only one, and it says, what, 50 beds? 50 beds at the Memorial Arena. I suppose it's, uh, this is hopefully my last stand. Yeah, right here on the, here, yeah. on Pandora here? So my long-term uh, goal is to uh, be the last, I'll be the last resident here on the uh, Pandora Island, we'll call it. Because on uh, May 9th, apparently, they're going to try to, like, shut it down, eh? Oh, there's an informational over here from the Indigenous Aboriginal Coalition for Tantoma. Apparently, the authorities uh, aren't quite ready as they thought they were going to be. So they won't be forced to go anywhere anyway, anytime soon. Yeah, I hope Nobody's not. Nobody's going to be forced anyway. Regardless of the pandemic, those civil rights come first. Yeah, for sure. We're going to be here on the 9th to document, like, right. whatever happens. And well, we, you know, the only the only view that the public's gotten of this is uh, the, what the um, mainstream narrative puts out. It's because there's only one narrative right now. Yeah, that's right. You have to talk to everybody. You can't just talk to the government who gets paperwork handed to them. And if you only give them paperwork from one source every single time, it's kind of hard to have the full scope of what's going on. Yeah. So yeah, it, it is nice to talk to everybody. The friends of mine from the uh, Baptist Church coming up, they do a uh, tour up here a couple of week, couple times a week, and they, they'll actually come by and they'll ask for me to come walk with them. Eh? These are, uh, this is the Ronnie's. Gentlemen, how are we? So these are my friends, this is Fernie and Owen. Owen. Hey guys. How's it hey. going? Hey. Skid, Skid. This is Ron and Ron, and this is <laughs> Regis. Regis. Three, three, three hours, hours anyway. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> For the last three years, do a street ministry, and during this COVID thing, we can't have a group there, so we come out and walk around in pairs or trips. Nice, yeah, yeah, keep it to small groups. Yeah, keep it small groups, keep the distance, and make it safe. So I heard Horgan uh, announced some new restrictions today. Is that right? New Did anybody hear about that? The relief of uh, the restrictions. Is it relief? The exit yeah. plan. How to start yeah. opening things again? So we're allowed uh, this to. This gathering we're still might be illegal. That's right. <laughs> so the word I heard yeah. was that you're allowed numbers yeah, of six. Exactly. Six feet, eh? Six. Well, six right. numbers of six. So <laughs> yeah. six max. None of us are shaking hands or sitting down. We all walked no, up we to all... say hello briefly. Yeah. We established social distancing, even here in, the, in this community, right early on. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Unfortunately, neither of us are smokers. Oh, okay. But we're doing a bit of a documentary on the situation in the area and just everyone's opinion, if you want to have your voice heard about anything. I, I talk all night because you give me enough coffee. Okay. I'll get you coffee, okay? But 
give him take two minutes. Sure. Yeah. All right. Let's do a walk and talk over to San Let's do a walk and talk over to get a coffee, though. How has the world changed for you since the uh, the COVID nineteen crisis? It was unexpected. I didn't see it coming. So I don't watch enough television. So I, if I would have known ahead of time, I would have saved up and bought all kinds of food and stuff like that. I'm a big believer in living every day like it's our last. And you know what? Canada's had it better than almost every other country. You know, it's attitude, our attitude. Uh, I lived outside, I lived in doorways. I have a roof, it's not that big a deal. I, don't get, I never get the flu, I never take flu shots. It's a fear, you live in fear, you die in fear. Live every day like your last, don't be afraid. I, um, I almost died when I was five years old in a car accident. So every day after that, everything's a piece of cake. Well, my prayers go to you, my friend. Thank you. Well, it does have very uh, historical significance that nobody's going to pick up, pick up on for a bit. Kind of right. Uh, change of the guard. Come on, try to. You guys want coffee?